Hi guys, Jack Spierko here coming to you from the back porch on a uh, Tuesday afternoon after wrapping up the podcast for the day. I got a question that I kind of thought I'd answered, but maybe I didn't make it clear enough, or maybe I didn't isolate it out to a single thing, uh, or maybe God just missed it. But I figured if, if one person has a question, quite a few might. Uh, this is from Sandcastle Dreams, and it's basically on the nitrite nitrate cycle, but I don't think he really put it that way. He just basically said, I don't get this. How are you not killing the fish in one of these systems? And I don't remember which video. It was one of the videos related to this 300 gallon build that we're working on, and I'll have some more updates on that system for you really soon. Um, but basically, he said, Look, I, I just don't get it. I don't understand how you're putting all this stuff in the system and you're not killing the fish. All right, so let me explain something to you. We're not putting this in the system. The fish are putting this in the system. That's their purpose. Now, if, if you're watching my videos and you see me when I'm doing one of the wicking beds, which are built with soil, and I'm putting you know nitrogen from the blood meal and the bone meal and, and, and organic fertilizers and stuff like that, um, that's not really going to go in and affect the water of the system very much. We're talking about, we got, you know, 12 to 14 inches of soil, and that stuff's up at the top of it. And yeah, on a big rain event, some of that stuff can get into the system, but the whole reason that we set it up the way that we do is because it basically stays suspended in the soil. So that's one of the, you know, before we even get into this other side of it, that's one of the real advantages of wicking beds. When you're doing ebb and flow beds or you're doing deep water, you got to make sure that you have a good balance between your fish and your plants, and specifically that you've basically overstocked the system enough to produce enough excess waste from your fish to feed your plants, but not so much so that the plants can't use it up so that your fish don't kill themselves with their own waste. That's what aquaponics is. When you do you know, conventional aquaponics, where you're doing, again, an ebb and flow bed, which is if you've got your media like lava rock or pebble, uh, clay pebbles, leka, what have you, and the water's coming up and down and up and down, or you've got it, your uh, raft and you're sitting in, in, in water and you're growing lettuces and leafy greens when you're doing deep water most of the time, you're relying 100% on those fish to have produced enough waste to feed those plants. And the only way to do that is to stock that system at a higher level than you would stock, let's say, if it was an aquarium that you had for tropical fish in your house. You, you've basically got to overstock it and not too much. It's, it's, a, it's a balance. It's, a, it's an art that you learn as you go. And basically when your plants don't look like you're, you're, you're getting enough nutrient, you add some more fish. And when uh, your, your, your water test levels don't look right, you, you take some fish out or you add some more plants. When it comes to wicking beds, all of that kind of goes out the window. Unless you do something really stupid like uh, a really heavy drench of your uh, wicking beds with some kind of a liquid fertilizer, you're not going to have a very marked effect on the water quality at all. However, the fish in a system like this, plants or no plants, they produce waste and primarily they're producing uh, ammonia. And that ammonia is in the form of nitrite. And that ammonium nitrite is toxic to your fish. And it's even actually toxic to plants. What it's not toxic to are various colony forming bacteria. And that's why in a, in a, a tropical tank, like where you just have guppies or angelfish or something like that, you'll have a filter that does, you know, first of all, there's two types of filtering. There's mechanical and biological. Mechanical filtering is things like a, a mesh or a cotton or some sort of a material that when water is pulled through there, the particulate matter floating around gets stuck in there and that basically makes the water clear. But it doesn't do much, if anything at all, to remove toxins from the water. So you'll have some sort of a media. A lot of times you'll have a gravel bottom in aquariums. That's one place a lot of bacteria form. But a lot of times in the filter itself, there'll be some sort of a media. When we do aquaponics, we really try to always get in every system at least one good sized ebb and flow bed. So if you have a 50 gallon Rubbermaid tote, for instance, is one of your ebb and flow beds, and it's full of lava rock, that lava rock getting there really for mechanical filtration, it's going to do some. It's really there as a growing media for the plants, and it's there for biological filtration. And if you took a lava rock and you take a look at it, you see little holes, millions and millions of holes in there. 
And all of those holes have surface area. So that, as I've said before in videos, you had one little rock this big. But if you were to, like, explode it out, like take it from three-dimensional to two-dimensional, as to a flat surface representing the total surface area, that one lava rock might have as much surface area as the house behind me. And we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them in there. And in all those little nooks and crannies and gaps and, and what have you, these bacteria colonize it. They go in there and they do what bacteria do. They munch and nom on whatever they prefer to eat. Uh, in this case, it's the ammonium nitrite. And they chew on it they, and they expel their own waste after consuming it. And they put out nitrate. Now, the plants can't use the nitrite, but they can use the nitrate. It is bio biologically available to them. It is also still toxic to your fish. But like all things, it's only toxic if the levels are high enough to actually be toxic. There's plenty of things in the world that are actually beneficial to you uh, in small amounts, but in large amounts, they could kill you. So if we look at something like zinc, zinc is a necessary nutrient. If you have no zinc at all, you become deficient, it can cause problems. Sorry, the mosquitoes are out. Um, but if, if I were to uh, give you large amounts of zinc over time, you'd get metal poisoning from it and you'd die. So there's a lot of things out there that are like that, that either they're beneficial in small amounts or they're inconsequential in small amounts, but in large amounts they can kill you. There's CO2 in the air that you're breathing every day, but it doesn't hurt you. You're, you're getting enough oxygen that it's not a problem. But if we locked you in an airtight container uh, and you were just exhaling and you're O2 levels are dropping and your CO2 levels are going up, eventually you fall asleep and never wake up. Think of it, it's not the same thing, but think of it kind of like that. They're producing a waste, actually it's very much the same thing. You're in a sealed container, you're producing, an, by exhalation, a waste product in the form of CO2. Without something to scrub it out and make it something you can use back to O2, you'll die. That's how it is with your fish. They're peeing and they're pooping and peeing, but really it's the pee. That's where all the ammonia concentration is. It's producing this, this nitrite. And when these uh, bacterium converted over to nitrate, it then, as it's flowing through your system and all of this biological filtration that we've created in the form of, in my system's lava rock, but there's other things we can do to do that with, those bacteria nom 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 nom. Okay, so now we end up in a situation where we now have gone to nitrate. This is where the plants come in. The plants now absorb that nitrate because the plants need nitrogen and take it out of the water and effectively they are biologically helping to filter the system for your fish. Plants aren't even necessary for this process to work. Some of that will off gas, some of it will be taken up by other things in the system. Um, in an in a aquarium in your house, if it's not planted, you're probably running charcoal and that'll help pull that stuff out. But in all aquatic systems, it's very important that we establish this cycle and there's a period in time, that's when you hear the term cycle. You put fish into the system, that thing, that process isn't working yet. So what happens is your nitrites skyrocket. They get way, way up here until your bacteria population grows up enough to start chewing on it and start eating it and start converting it over. So if you actually do take test strips and, and test this stuff, and I've talked about it before, I don't even do it. I just put low value fish in there and let them take care of it. When they stop dying, it's done. But you'll see your nitrite level slowly, slowly, slowly come up and it'll go like a parabolic curve and it'll peak. And it'll start to come down a little bit, a little bit, and then it'll just crash. And you'll see your nitrates come up to a manageable level. You're also going to look at your pH and other things like that. But that's how that works. It's a biological process where the bacteria in the system over time develop into a sufficient uh, a population that they're able to handle the conversion so that your plants can actually use the waste matter. A lot of people think, well, I put the fish in there and they poop and they pee and the plants eat that. They don't. That's not what they do. They eat the biological chemical result of a process that that is one piece of. So I hope that makes sense. I'll always try to answer your questions. If you have any more questions, just post them down there in the comments below. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see that you haven't, let me know. On another note, 
either tomorrow or Thursday, the new ducks are supposed to be here. I'm a little worried because I did not get a shipping confirmation from Metzer Farms. And they, they have, I got to say, they have let me down in the past with duck orders before. I just sent them an email now. We'll see if I hear anything from them. But I'm hoping that either tomorrow or, or Thursday, I'll do a little quick video for you guys with Duck Chronicles Season 4 coming at you. And we'll keep up with the aquaponics stuff and all the other cool stuff. Remember, if you like the stuff that I do here on YouTube, you're probably going to love my podcast. It's way more diverse than what I've had out on uh, YouTube. It's called the Survival Podcast. We talk about modern survivalism. Doomsday bunkers, friends, it is not. It is how to live your life in the modern era in a way that makes your life resilient against all things. And to be able to do that in a way where your life gets better if times get tough or even if they don't, you can learn all about it by putting that URL that all the cool kids are putting in their phone. It is tspc.co. You don't need the app, just tspc.co. If you don't think it works, give it a try. You'll see I'm right.